Arab Loggers. Tonight I've got a great guest on the podcast. Recently been doing hip hop artists, but now I've got uh, Cincinnati Bengals linebacker Dahani Jones joining me. And he's a globetrotter too. Dahani, what's going on? What's going on? How are you doing? Good, good. Now, the question I often ask on my podcast is, you know, uh, what's been going on, like, the maybe like the more personal side? I know you've been uh, doing all this other stuff, you know, in the off season, and we'll get to that, but, you know, what have you been doing recently in, in the off season, or just, you know, you know, getting your mind together, getting your spirit together, you know, just, what, what have you been doing, relaxing, you know, what's been going on? I mean, you do a little bit relaxing, a little more than anything, you know, you just do training preparation for the upcoming season. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of if it's a lockout or not, you have to do the things that are necessary to prepare for the, for the season. So, you know, working out in the morning, working out in the evening, and just you know, getting your mind right and understand that, um, you know, the game will come back. It's unfortunate that it's not where it needs to be right now, but soon, soon, when uh, when every deal gets done and when everybody gets on the same page, the game will continue and everybody that's prepared will be ready to go. Right. Now, I had your, your teammate, uh, Reggie Kelly, on the podcast last week, and, and he was doing numerous things this offseason also. And a lot of times it's kind of a cliche to say someone, you know, has a busy offseason. But for you, you know, you're tackling the globe, uh, literally, you know, with your TV show on the Travel Channel. But you also have uh, many charities you're involved in, and, and you have your new book that just hit shelves about a month ago. And you have what's called the Bowtie Cafe. You do a lot of bicycling, and, and you play in the NFL. But uh, let's break it, you know, down first. I, what caught my attention was the the bow tie cafe, and you know, explain to listeners what that is. And you, you you know, you put one on Jay Leno, and you explain to him what the bow tie was all about. But you know, tell us, you know, what that whole thing is all about. Well, bow tie cost started off is uh, for my initiative in order to help one of my friends who had a uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I started wearing bow ties to support him because mm-hmm. um, he challenged me if I want to be anybody, got to rock the bow tie, and I didn't want to at the beginning, and then found out that he had uh, lymphoma, and I wanted to wear the bow tie, and he got better. I never took the bow tie off. Yeah. So every single organization that we work with, whether it be um, uh, JDRF, um, Julian Diabetes Research Foundation, or the uh, Leukemia Lymphoma Society or, or Livestrong Foundation stand up to cancer. Uh, we're working with the 9 11 where I mean, whether it's any of those organizations, we want to help other people tell their stories and, um, you know, and to sort of talk about their cause and what they believe in. And so that extended into the cafe, and that's what the Bowtie Cafe and Mount Adams is all about. It's about people sharing their, their, their cause and their story and what they believe in. And, if, you know, if you don't know your own cause and you don't know, you know, your own story, then eavesdrop on somebody else so that you can learn how to sort of express that and, and uh, talk with others. So that's where Bowtie Cause, and that's bowtiecause.org, and that's where the Bowtie Cafe all originated from. Right. Now, would it be uh, very strange to see the Honey Jones rocking, like, the, the regular uh, long tie? Because that's ty- kind of, I have to admit, no, that's no, kind no, of I, 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 I never rock. I never rock a long, <laughs> a long neck tie. It's all about the bow tie. You know, it's, um, it's all about... Uh, who you are as a person, but in, really in, inside who you, um, who you have always been, and um, who you aspire to be. Yeah, right now your show on the Travel Channel, Channel, uh, the Honey Tackles the Globe. You do about just about every sport imaginable, and your book tells us about those journeys. Now, tell us about the experiences you know that you had firsthand, and tell us more about the book. Well, um, in the sportsman, and this is a. Is a recap of the last 33 and third year of my life, if you will. But more importantly, it's really talking about um, how the Honey Tackle of the Globe came to be and why would I take a chance and travel around the world and play different sports and learn about different cultures. It talks a little bit about my, my life growing up and talks about sort of my attitude and the, the things in life that have shaped me and ultimately arriving um, at a great opportunity to travel, meet different people, and just come. Uh, become even more mature, become more understanding about the great world that's around us. So going from Thailand to Switzerland to Singapore to Spain, mm-hmm. um, you know, going to going to to Nepal, Nepal, and not making it up to uh, to to uh, Table Mountain, but making it to Kalapatar, um, or making it to um, you know Russia doing Sambo and having some of the hardest training I've ever had to do or making it to, um, you know, Brazil, just doing volleyball. But learning about all these different cultures, learning about all these different countries, learning about ultimately about all these amazing people and how that kind of set, resets my, my mindset, my worldview, and how, how I wish to deliver that to other people. 
What do you think your favorite challenge was that you that you actually did? Because I saw the, the the Mexican wrestler that you you went up against. What was like probably the most memorable or your favorite thing that you did? Uh, most memorable. There's so there's so many of those. I mean, just landing <laughs> yeah, in every sure. single country and meeting people and those the most memorable. I'd, I'd be hard hard pressed to say exactly which one that would so, be. They're but, all memorable. You know, the last, the, they're all memorable. But the one going to Nepal uh -huh. and not being able to make it to the top and ultimately failing at yeah. the last episode, um, but at the same time saving someone's life and allowing them to get back down, not even though they had a. Uh, they had high altitude sickness. Uh, that was one of the most memorable experiences ever. Right. Now, you know, let's talk about football. It, it looks more and more like this lockout is going to be lifted, you know, somewhat soon. And some players have taken it upon themselves during the lockout to train and do whatever. You know, what have you been up to in that aspect? And as a veteran, has the extra time off been an advantage to you? Or are you just ready to get back on the field and play? No, I think everybody's just ready to get back on the field and play. I mean, I've been moving and doing as I always have been um, and taking advantage of the off season and uh, you know talking about of course the sportsmen mm -hmm. talking about um, you know, travel I've formed a new relationship with Bing um, um, you know just doing different things working with my creative agency BMG Creative mm -hmm. whether it's doing all these different aspects I'm still maintaining that, that workout regimen that I do day in and day out and you know work out in the morning lifting and then the evening a little bit of CrossFit, a little, little bit of boxing, but these are all the things that I learned when I was on the road, um, when I was going to different places like Thailand and Cambodia, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing kick, doing kickboxing and, and training, regardless of the situation. That's mm -hmm. how you, that's how you prepare for the future. You're always ready to go. Now you're a free agent, uh, but your first choice is to remain with the Bengals. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, you know, I had I had a great experience in Cincinnati. I've been there for the last four years. Um, I was really. Uh, I'm a part of the community. I enjoy it. Um, and, you know, um, Cincinnati. Sometimes people don't understand, but it's a, it's really a it's a, it's a it's a small big town, if you will. Right. And right. the people are very kind. Everybody's so generous, and especially in the philanthropic world of Cincinnati, everybody commits a lot of their time and energy to helping others. And although it's not talked about a lot, um, I've seen it and I've been a part of it, and, then, uh, and I respect everybody for that. And it's really the first place. You know, when I came, I, I would say like this, New York was a place that raised me, Cincinnati was a place that allowed me to grow up real fast, and Cincinnati is where yeah. I'm ultimately settled. Right, now, you know, I asked this to Reggie too, and I'm going to ask it to you. You know, the Bengals, many think, you know, the last few years since you made the playoffs, you know, you kind of underperformed, and as a leader on the team, you know, as a veteran, do you think that 2011 will be any different if we get to play football, obviously, and is this team going to, to come together and threaten in the AFC North? I think that the team will definitely come together. The team has come together mm. and uh, has gotten better over time. And like any other team, it takes all, it takes time to grow. It takes time to put the right pieces together. And then when the pieces are assembled in the right way and everybody's exactly on the right page, everything will fall into place. With a little bit of luck, you, you'll win the championship. So um, we've seen great things happen. And there's going to be great things in the near future. Right, and, and you now this podcast that I'm doing here is, is based out of Columbus, Ohio, and uh, many of my listeners are, are Buckeye fans. And while a lot of Ohio likes the Bengals, you know, most don't like your alma mater, Michigan. Now, I have room on my podcast for a few Wolverines, especially great guys like you, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to say it bluntly, y'all have taken a whoop in the last few years in that game. But, you know, I want to know, you know, wh what you think about the direction is of the Michigan program, because it seems like they are making improvements, and, you know, they made a bowl last year, they have a new coach. And, and with all these problems Ohio State is encountering now with the scandals and losing players, it seems like, you know, the field is getting more level on that note. But, you know, where do you see Michigan, you know, what they're doing this year? How do you think they'll do this year? And what is your prediction for that last weekend in November? Um, prediction for the last weekend is easy. We're going to be successful and we're going to win and we're going to take back uh, to Michigan where, where it should always be. <laughs> That's unfortunate. In the last couple of years, we haven't done as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Brady Hoke is a great coach. I've played with him and I have a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of respect and the players have a tremendous amount of respect for him and the, and the program will ultimately regain its, uh, re regain its position where it should never have lost it in the first place. 
So I'm excited about everything that's going to happen in the Big Ten this year. Right, you were you were on that. Uh, you know, you've experienced Michigan success because you were on that that championship team in '97. And you know, what was that all about? And you know, how how was that experience is how was that experience good for you? And you know, just kind of like reliving that. You know, what was that all about? No, I mean, playing for the University of Michigan is a great experience. Um, anyone that's ever had, anybody that's, that's been a part of that program, that's gone to the university, understands the um, program. And it's, it's phenomenal. And, you know, I've never traded for anything. Dahani, thank you very much for joining me on the Mayor Blog Podcast this evening. Uh, best of luck to you, best of luck to the Bengals, and you know, I'll be tuning into your show more often. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. All right, thank you. I'll talk to you soon.